Hi, this is Doug Johnson. I'm the director of the McLean County Arts Center, and we thought during this time of all being homebound, it'd be a great opportunity to do offer some uh, free classes. So uh, this is going to be part of an ongoing series, and we'll begin with watercolor. Watercolor painting is a lot of fun. It's relatively inexpensive to start. It doesn't take a whole lot of room to store the materials. It doesn't have uh, unsightly fumes like uh, oil painting can have, and it's easily transportable. You can pack up a tablet of watercolor paper, three tubes of paint, a handful of brushes, and take it almost anywhere anytime you go on a trip. So this will be an overview of beginning watercolor, and we'll talk about some of the tools you need, some of the tips that help make it a little bit easier, and some of the tricks so that you can start right away and feel like you know what you're doing. The first thing to think about is materials and with that you need to have a good paper, good paint, and a few good brushes. Watercolor paper is typically thicker than uh, standard drawing paper and it has a, a sizing which is either infused in the paper at the time that it's made or applied to the surface. That sizing is a gum Arabic. And what that does is provide surface tension so that when you're applying wet paint to the paper, it doesn't soak right in. It uh, essentially is able to respond to the surface and give you some working time. When you're painting, and if you've ever gone over an area several times and you've kind of scrubbed uh, the paint into the paper, you'll eventually find that without that sizing, the watercolor paper kind of acts like a uh, like a paper towel and you no longer have any control for it. So to that end, I would encourage you to get some some good quality watercolor paper and that could be individual sheets, it could come uh, in a spiral ream, or it could come as uh, a block of watercolor paper. I'll give you a couple examples. So watercolor paper that's spiral bound will look something like this. It'll have some nice texture and be fairly thick. And that's a good way to go. The only problem with this type of paper is that you have to give yourself a fairly sizable border and not paint all the way to the edges because if you were to do that uh, the paper would have a tendency to buckle and you'd get some puddling and remove some of the control that you'd want. Another way to get paper is with a watercolor block. And this has the uh, paper adhered to the block on all four sides with a little gap at the end so you can just peel it off after you've completed the painting and it's dry. That keeps it from buckling and provides a nice level of, uh, of uh, security for you as you work over the canvas. Next, you want to think about watercolor paint. And watercolor paint comes in a lot of different uh, delivery methods. Uh, my favorite is watercolor tubes. And you can get watercolor tubes in almost any color imaginable. Um, what we'll be doing in this class is looking at really working in what is the English watercolor method. And that's using uh, three colors only. And uh, those colors would be Indian Yellow, Indian Red, and Indigo. And that's the, the color palette that was established uh, in the English watercolor method. It allows for easily uh, developed uh, a full palette because those are primary colors. Um, and if you look at the work of uh, Winslow Homer or John Singer Sargent, two of the more famous historical watercolor painters, they started every painting using that very limited palette. They may have added to it later on, but that palette was really the way that they began. Another method for getting paint would be something like the Prang set. And Prang watercolors are readily available. You could probably even have them in your house if you have any kids that were school age and went through uh, the, uh, the local school districts, because this is something that's really an academic set. And it comes with cake watercolors, and each of these are, in many ways, 
uh, exactly like the the watercolors in the tubes, except they're semi moist. So they've they've been placed in here, and they've uh, partially dried out. But they're very easy to uh, to use. It's a good quality paint. It comes with its own mixing tray, and it often comes with uh, a squirrel hair brush, which is something that's well not a great brush. It's something that you could definitely use for washes, and that leads us to talking about brushes. Really, I think you need to, to look at having four or five brushes that you feel comfortable with. And I would encourage you to look at synthetic brushes. These could be the same brushes that if you've ever done oil painting or, or acrylic painting, you may have these. But I would encourage you to set whatever brushes you use for watercolor aside and use them just for that. So a synthetic brush is a brush that's made out of nylon or some other man-made material and uh, they end up being uh, less expensive than an animal hair brush but can be very good quality brushes. You can often buy these in a set as well. So this is a one inch flat brush which I like because it gives me control to fill in a lot of areas. I turn them on its side, it gives me a line. I turn them on its point, it gives me uh, very very sharp detail. So a good flat brush is excellent. I also like using a round brush, and this is a fairly small round brush, but a round brush uh, allows for a lot of action where you can drag it across very delicately or uh, roll it on its side to fill an area and come up with some organic mark making. Uh, but a round brush is one of those essential brushes. Now I talked before about mop brushes, and this is an example of a mop brush. It's a little bigger than you'd have that would come in the Prang set, but it is uh, a squirrel hair brush, and it's, it's a type of hair, unlike other brushes, that is not real easily controlled. I mean, it, it, it holds water very well, but you aren't able to get a real fine point on it, and it ends up being a, a nice brush for, for doing glazes or big areas where you're moving water around because it is so so loose, it doesn't drag a lot of paint with it. Uh, you can't really scrub with it, and that's not a bad thing either. I also like having a bigger flat brush, and this is great for laying down areas, uh, whether with water or with paint, and it gives you a lot of, of uh, control, and again, you can make calligraphic marks. You can change how a brush moves across the paper, and it gives you a lot of advantages. So when you do a watercolor, there are three basic techniques to apply paint to the paper. Those are wet on wet, wet on dry, and dry brush. Unfortunately, they're as straightforward as that sounds. So wet on dry is the first thing we'll do. So I'm just mixing some paint with water, and I'm applying marks to my dry paper. And you can see we get those kind of effects which are exactly what we think of when you think of watercolor. And then once it's applied, that's it. You can let that dry, and then paint over it again. The next step, or the next technique rather, is wet on wet. And so here I'm loading up my mop brush with just water and I'm applying it to my dry paper. And so I have a pool of wet water. Now I can go back and take my same loaded brush and apply paint just to one side. And then with that, you can use gravity and surface tension to allow that paint to move across the paper. As a matter of fact, you can even go a step further and using that pool of action, you can apply a second color and have those colors interact and create veils of action. 
so that they blend organically. And finally, the last of the three basic techniques is dry brush. So I'm taking my brush. It's loaded with paint and water as before, but I'm going to squeeze out the water until I have really just primarily pigment. And when I drag that across, you can see that the paint is really just catching the tops of those fibers of the water, of the uh, the paper, and you end up getting texture. And you can use that with really any brush as well. So your first assignment will be to take a piece of paper and create uh, a page of experiments with wet on dry, wet on wet, and dry brush.